This is Gus Summers, and you're watching In Show Celebrities. This is the time I take every Monday to talk about some of my favorite films and actors. This week, we have another grand actor of Hollywood. This wonderful comedian is not only known for his great uh, television and film work, he is also an Emmy-nominated and Emmy-winning actor and also an Oscar-nominated actor. Of course, I'm talking about the great Bill Murray. He got his career uh, started in comedy in the, uh, in the 1970s. He got a big break when he was asked to join the debut cast for a new show. It was on NBC and it was called Saturday Night Live. Well, after that debut show, he left to L.A. to pursue, you know, some acting and, you know, his, com uh, his comedy. And then, in the second year of that show, one of the original cast members left, Mr. Chubby Chase, and they offered that slot to Bill Murray, which he jumped at, and the rest we know as history. Well, being there for a while, he got a big job offer. It was his first leading role in a movie, and from there, there was no looking back. He just continued on uh, with a string of great uh, comedy and even dramatic movies. Well, first up is that first movie that even when you watch it today, it still holds up as a great comedy. It's one of those, you know, those summer uh, hijink movies with, you know, teenagers and, you know, kids at summer camp. It's a great film. The movie, Meatballs. He plays Tripper, uh, the camp counselor. He's, he's the cool guy. You know, he's the one that wears the funny hats and funny clothes and encourages all, you know, all the kids and all the camp counselors to, you know, to interact with each other and look forward to the activities and, of course, you know, pull off any hijinks they can uh, get away with. Well, uh, along with uh, Tripper Bill Murray, there is uh, his love interest there, uh, Roxanne, played by Kate Lynch. Uh, she's the one that, uh, you know, keeps up with him, and uh, she's a great match uh, for him, because whatever hijinks he tries to pull, you know, she's there uh, right next to him. And then there is uh, Morty. He's like the, the main camp counselor here, um, portrayed by a, a, another great actor. Um, Harvey Atkin, uh, he, he's known for, you know, the, these big round glasses and this big, uh, big mustache. And he's the one that, you know, tries to take everything really serious. And <laughs> when he tries to talk, no one pays attention to him. Well, then, you know, you have all the, uh, all the cast of characters. You have, you know, all the teenagers who are the, uh, what they call the CITs, the, the counselors in training. You know, they're the older kids. They're like, you know, like 16, 17. Um, taking care of you know all the younger kids they're assigned to you know different cabins you know some 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 uh, you know young kids and you know like six to eight and from ten to twelve and so on and so forth and there's one uh, particular uh, young man who uh, Bill Murray takes under his wing because he he comes he comes to the camp and he's you know lonely he's uh, you know one of those misunderstood kids uh, he his name is Rudy betrayed by uh, Chris Makepeace. You might remember him from another great movie uh, from the 80s called uh, My Bodyguard. Um, but he plays uh, Rudy, and, you know, he, he's, uh, from the beginning of the film, you see his father drop him off, and he, it gives the impression that maybe he doesn't have a mother and he's trying to cope with something. So he's trying to cope with both sides of, uh, uh, you know, negative self-image, uh, negativity from other people, you know, they don't like him, and, you know, he's not very athletic, so they don't want him on his team. Like I said, Bill Murray takes him under his wing and really starts, you know, encouraging, encouraging him and, and counseling him. Uh, so uh, the whole the whole thing about the movie is you see Bill Murray, you know, talking to the counselors and encouraging them, you know, to get involved with the activities. And you see all the hijinks that he pulls off, which, you know, the kids love because uh, they pull a lot of these stunts on a, uh, a Murray. It's like one of the things that they do is when he's asleep, they'll pick up his bed and put it in odd spots. They'll put it outside or they'll put it up in a, you know, those little string 
uh, rope up and tie it up to the tree. So they're always doing practical jokes. And then, you know, you got the typical fare of, you know, the boys trying to listen into the girls' conversations and, you know, the girls, you know, uh, finding out and, uh, you know, uh, playing tricks on the boys. So, you know, a lot of typical little behavior. But what I liked about the film is that you here's Bill Murray who actually, you know, sees uh, Chris make peace in, in, a, in a trouble spot and he, you know, he encourages him and friend and, and befriends him. Uh, they'll, they'll play cards and, you know, they'll just hang out and talk. Uh, Bill Murray likes to run in the morning and Chris uh, make peace, uh, his character Rudy, saw him one morning and just, you know, started following him and running and, and then every morning they would run together and they started bonding. You know, they, it was great in, in that regards. Uh, and also, when you hear some of the the teenagers talk to some of the young kids, it's like there's an opening scene where there's a little boy who brought his pet frog and he's showing his two other little friends and they're saying, hey, that your frog is dead. He goes, no, it's it, it's sleeping. And he goes, no, look at it, it's dead. And they're trying, you know, they're kind of, you know, kind of like poking at it. And, and the counselor who's in charge, one of the CITs, comes over and takes a look. And, he, and the little boy is really upset. He goes, he's, he's, he's only asleep, isn't he? And the counselor, you can tell that it's, that it's died, but the counselor says, it's okay. You know, why don't you guys go and play? I'll take care of it. You know, you know what I like, you know, that's one of the things I like about the film, that it was not one of these films that, turns into, you know, troubled teens and, you know, taking advantage of, of, you know, younger children that actually cared about each other. Uh, so that's, uh, that's going on in this camp. You know, that's the focus of the film. Uh, it's Cap North Star. And that's for, you know, for everyone who can go. And then across the lake, there is another camp, uh, Camp uh, Mohawk, and they're and they're the you know the rich kids. They're the ones that have you know the special equipment, the special out um, outfits, and what have you. And one of the things that, uh, in regard to the movie, is that they have this little Olympics, and they you know they they uh, bid each camp against each other, and they, it's a little Olympics to see. Uh, who ends up winning? So at, you know, towards the end of the film, you have this you know, climactic uh, race uh, between both camps, and it's you know do or die. The, you know, e each camp has to win. But you know, I, I won't give that away. But I do want to uh, talk about a scene. It's a great scene. I never forgot it when I first saw the film. Uh, you know, Bill Murray. It, it's like the last day, and Bill Murray, uh, last day of the Olympics, and Bill Murray's trying to you know encourage everybody. Look, we can do it. We can fight. But you know, if even if we don't win, you know, it, it it just doesn't matter. You know what? It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And then everyone starts chanting this. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And that becomes the you know the, the little theme for them. It just doesn't matter. But again, you know, you know, it's a funny film. Um, like I said, it's a, it's it's not for small kids. You know, you know, there are some uh, innuendos there between boys and girls. But uh, for those of you who've seen it, you know, I know you you'll enjoy it. Uh, for those of you who've seen, it, I know you enjoyed it, and for those who will see it, I know you'll like it. Well, the next up is of course probably one of his best known films and of course one of my favorites the film what about bob <laughs> he plays bob wiley you know this n neurotic phobic uh, personality that you know is afraid of germs afraid of loud noises he he hates going outside <laughs> You know, he, he plays his character perfect because you know he's, he's just he makes these faces and the way he touches the stuff or doesn't want to touch stuff so what ends up happening is uh he has an appointment with a new uh psychologist or psychiatrist uh because his old one has uh, said i'm quitting and his new uh, his new psychiatrist uh the, the wonderful richard Dreyfus. he plays a uh, dr leo marvin you know he's he's arrogant and you know, proudful and he you know he just wrote a book and um when uh you know bob is there uh talking with him and you know he's he's having these little breakthroughs and he's all doctor you, you can you can cure me i think you can really cure me and he says well richard Dreyfus stands up from his from his uh from his desk and says you know there's a there's a wonderful new book out that just came out and he has you know he has his typical you know 
uh, psychiatry uh, uh, books, you know, on the shelves. And on the bottom shelves are all his books, you know, they're bright yellow, you know, packaging. He's all, uh, uh, oh, here it is. <laughs> he pulls out his book and he says, you know, look at the title. And I know that will say it all. And it says Baby Steps. And he goes, yes, read the book. It's about baby steps. He goes, don't think about, you know, like what's happening outside, but just think, take the baby steps to the door. And once you get to the door, you know, out to the elevator. And from the elevator, go on, you know, so on and so forth. You know, just baby steps. And, ba and Bill Murray's all, yeah, okay, baby steps. He goes, great, I can't wait to our next session. He goes, yeah, me either, but I'm leaving for vacation. He goes, you're leaving? What do you, what do you mean you're leaving? Goes, well, I'm leaving for a month. I'm leaving for a Labor Day, if I remember correctly. I'm leaving for Labor Day. And Bill Murray's, oh, you know, you can't believe it. What happens if I need you? Can I call you? He goes, no, if you need me, call call my call my uh, my the, the, my other partner or, or wait for me. I'll be back in a month. And so Bill Murray just can't, you know, can't can't stand it. So Richard Dreyfuss and his family leaves to go on vacation for a month. And Bill Murray does everything he can to try to uh, find out where, you know, uh, Richard Dreyfuss is. He, he tries calling, saying he's sick, that he's suicidal. They patch him through. Richard Dreyfuss says, don't call me anymore. You know, if it's an emergency, go to the emergency room. So long story short, he, uh, he gets the information to where uh, Richard Dreyfuss' uh, vacation home is. And so he goes to the little town. So Richard Dreyfuss and his family are in the in the, a store, and you see, you know, all the uh, all the heartache that Bill Murray has to go through when he's uh, on the bus. He carries he has a fish that he carries in a, it's his pet fish that he carries in a jar around his neck like a necklace, and you know he gets to the little town. The uh, Richard Drivers and his family are walking out of the store, and they start, and his wife uh, is saying, I think someone's calling you, and you hear in the middle of the street, Dr. Marvin, Dr. Leo Marvin, Dr. Bill Murray's just yelling, hoping to find him. And so he happens to find, you know, he happens to be there. He's all, Bob, this is highly inappropriate. You shouldn't be here. I told you I would treat you. He goes, I, I, but I need it. I need your help. I need, I need, I need. <laughs> he goes, fine, fine, I'll help you. I'll call you, wait here. So he takes his, he takes his family home. He's going to call him. But uh, there's an old couple that wanted to buy his, uh, Richard Dreyfuss's house. Uh, they were saving, you know, scrimping and saving. But Rich and Dyfus came and bought it, and they all hate him. So when they know that Bill Murray uh, was trying to find out where he lived, they gave him a ride. <laughs> And they took them to Richard Dreyfuss's house. And now Richard Dreyfuss is all, ah, what are you doing here? This is highly inappropriate. So while he's at the house, he's he's um, he's meeting, uh, you know, his family. His wife, Faye, another fantac uh, fantastic actress, um, Julie Haggerty. And then you have uh, his daughter, Anna, uh, Catherine Irving, and his son, this is uh, a Siggy. He showed for Sigmund. Uh, Charlie uh, Corsmo. So uh, Richard Dreyfuss, you know, doesn't want Bob to meet his family. And <laughs> he's telling him, you know, just, you know, get away. And But he, he's so friendly and so nice that, you know, the, the whole family, you know, right away, you know, likes him. And what ends up happening is uh, Richard Dreyfuss tells him, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something for you. And he pulls out this prescription book. And he's like, no, I don't need any more medication. And he says, no, no, no. Here, read it. And he, and he writes something and gives the prescription. He goes, it, uh, take a vacation from my problems. He goes, yes, I'm giving you permission, uh, Bob, to take a vacation from your problems. Goes, not from your daily life, not from your job, but from your problems. So anytime you have a problem, pull that out and say, I'm taking a vacation. And he goes, oh, I love it, I love it, thank you, I thank you, Dr. Marvin, I, you know, thank you, I knew you would help me, blah, blah, blah. And so Richard Dreyfus is really happy because he wants him gone, because the next day, uh, Good Morning America is going to come to interview him about his book, so he doesn't want him there. And so, you know, he, the next day, you know, Bob leaves, the next day, he... Uh, uh, Richard Dreyfus is, you know, getting ready, and then he hears a bell, ding, 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 and he's all... What is that? And he sees, he sees um, Burr Murray there uh, wearing this T-shirt that says, you know, don't hassle me, I'm local. And he says, 
what are you, what are you doing here? I told you you take a vacation. He goes, I am. He goes, I'm taking a vacation. I'm staying uh, with that old couple. The couple wanted to buy the house. They called the Gutmans. He goes, I'm staying with them. And so I'm not coming as a patient. I'm coming over as a neighbor, as a friend. You know, so so we can get the friendship thing going. <laughs> he's all, what? No. And, and you know, the family's happy, you know, that he's there because he's a really nice guy. And then he says, you know, you got to leave, you got to leave. And so before he leaves, Good Morning America comes. And the, he's into, Richard Dreyfuss is introducing everybody. And, and he says, oh, this is Bob. He's a patient of mine. And they say, oh, it's great that you're going to have a patient on with you. And they're like, he's all, oh, no, no, I don't want him. And, but... He ends up saying, okay, so while he's sitting, he's talking live. So the interview is live with Good Morning America. Uh, Bill Murray's getting sick, oh, 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 blowing into a bag. Are you okay? Yeah. And so the, the, the interviewer asks, you know, um, so Bob, uh, you know, after they ask Richard Dreyfuss a question, he blows it and she turns to Bob and says, you know, Bob, so how long have you been, have you been a, um, a patient of Dr. Marvin? He goes, oh, you know what, this, this, this book is fantastic. It's cured me. It's helped me so much. I've been a patient with him for about three or four days. They're all three or four days. And they're like, wow, it works that fast. And Richard Dreyfuss, no, no, it's not meant to work that fast. And Bill Murray says, but that's what's great about it. It, it works so fast. And he's just praising him because that's what's fantastic about this man. You know, he's wonderful and blah, blah, blah. And all, you know, all kinds of things happen. And at the end of the interview, he's saying, well, you know, you know, the, Dr. Marvin is fantastic. He goes, I can only think of three names um, that, that are equivalent and compared in greatness. Uh, the first one is uh, Dr. Albert Schweitzer. Uh, the other one is uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta and uh, Dr. Leo Marvin. <laughs> you know, and, and Richard Dreyfuss is all like, <laughs> you know, what am I going to say to this? You know? And so the interview is over. Richard Dreyfuss is angry. Get out, get out. <laughs> And, and this family all saying, why are you throwing him out? He's such a nice guy. And so, the, you know, the rest of the movie is just like that. I mean, for, I mean, it's a great film. You know, there are all the little scenes that you have on there. Like, uh, he ends up staying with, 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 the, the, with the family. Uh, he ends up uh, going. There's a scene where, you know, he's, he's actually walking. Uh, by himself home and, and uh, he gets scared and the daughter drives up hey are, are you okay he goes yeah yeah i'm fine he says would you like to go sailing uh oh, well i've never been sailing but oh, okay i'll go and then the whole scene you just see him and he's all i'm sailing i'm sailing and <laughs> they have him all tied to the mass he's all, i'm sailing and but a great movie. I mean, I mean, those are just some of the uh, some of the funny parts. But yeah, you you gotta watch it. A, a great film. Uh, what about Bob? Uh, this next film, uh, it's again my favorite. You know, one of my favorites. Uh, when you watch it, if you look at it as a film that could possibly be a continuation of What About Bob, because his his character is somewhat you know the same. He's He's, you know, in his kind of his own world and doing his own thing. And, you know, it just, he, he gels with, with life without realizing that he's, you know, not in sync with it. The film, The Man Who Knew Too Little. He plays uh, uh, Wallace Ritchie, uh, Wally, who is a, who's, who's an American. He, he, he works uh, for Blockbuster. But him and his brother tell everyone that he works in the uh, in the movie business. <laughs> he works for Blockbuster. He decides to go visit his uh, younger brother, uh, James, who lives in England, uh, for his birthday. He wants to see his brother James, a great uh, another uh, another great actor, uh, Peter Gallagher. So uh, Bill Murray is um, you know just shows up you know. Uh, out of the blue, uh, Peter Gallagher and his wife are like, oh, oh well, it's great. He, he, it, well, it's wonderful to see you. The wife has never met him. Peter Gallagher is like, you know, you, you can tell he loves his brother, but he has an important dinner. He has a, and, and he's making this great presentation. And, you know, Bill Murray, you know, is in his own world. So, he's, so they decide to send him on this thing that's called um, Theater uh, for Life. Theater of Life, something like that. What it is is that, it's a, a theater troupe that um, 
puts on a play for you and you go and you pretend that you're you know involved in a crime or you're a secret agent or what have you and so they send him uh, to be do this uh, do this uh, play so they he's supposed to be waiting at a phone booth he's going to get a call given an address and then he's going to you know the whole show is going to start phone rings he answers it and the guy says is this spencer and he goes yes yes this is spencer okay go here and you know what to do so he uh, he um he writes the information down tells his brother okay i need to go here he said okay great have a good time call me if you need me well he took a, a wrong call the call was actually for an assassin that was going to go and assassinate somebody so <laughs> he got that call so they there really is a spencer and, and so but he got their call and he's going there to you know, supposedly you know, assassinate somebody, and then the real Spencer comes. The theater troupe calls him, and he says, "You know, go right here. You're gonna see you know these people fighting." He goes there, and there's a guy pretending, "Hey, you know, what are you doing here? Hey, come on, you want to do something? Why don't you shoot me? Shoot me!" He pulls out his gun and shoots the actor, and they're all, "What happened? <laughs> we don't understand." And so the guy you know leaves, uh, thinking that's the job's done. So he, uh, Bill Murray, uh, Bill Murray goes to. Um, uh, goes to this uh, to the address, and that's where he uh, finds uh, Lori, uh, one of, who ends up being uh, a partner with him, uh, played wonderfully by uh, Joanna Wally. Uh, she has these letters that everyone wants because she's dating a, a, the British uh, British defense minister, if I remember correctly. She thinks that Bill Murray's there to kill her to get the letters, and Bill Murray thinks it's a, it's a you know a whole play. And he goes, hey, you know, he has his trench coat on with the suit, and he's wearing these glasses, and he's saying these lines. He goes, hey, you know, hey, I'm Spencer. I'm here for this, you know. And what's funny is that they feed him lines, and he says, she says, you know, you're here for the letters. He's like, oh yes, I'm here for the letters. You know, I want them, and you know, so on and so forth. So everyone feeds him lines, and then you know, he re he regurgitates them, and then you know, he he's seen what things are going, so he so he's um, you know playing you know playing along. You know, he thinks he's playing along. So uh, what ends up uh, what the, the whole plot of the story is is that. Um, a, 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 a Russian intelligence agent and one of uh, the Britain's, uh, it wasn't the defense minister, it was um, oh, well, an, another, uh, uh, an, another uh, you know, uh, high-ranking official, want to stop this meeting between uh, uh, Russian and British delegates because they're going to sign some sort of peace treaty or something. And they're wanting that not to happen so that they can restart the Cold War. And what they plan to do is use a Russian doll. Uh, you know, the Russian doll is one of those dolls that's, you know, doll within a doll within a doll, you know, as a bomb. So they're going to put it at the table, set it off, boom, it's going to explode. Each country is going to think the other one set it off because they didn't want this to happen. And then the Cold War starts all day. So, you know, that that's the ultimate end. And so everyone's kind of in line with that. Um, so, the, you know, this is where, you know, Bill Murray's kind of heading to because it's the same people that want Joanna, uh, Joanna Wally dead and get her letters. So, you know, as he's picking up phone calls, he's saying, they're saying, is this Spencer? Yeah, this is Spencer. Have you done it? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, I've, uh, I've done it. Or, you know, or no, I haven't. Well, why don't you get on it? Well, you know, I don't know. We, we need money and because, you know, they're talking, her and him are talking about money. So it's like there's uh, there's this one scene where uh, Spencer, you know, the, the true assassin is supposed to go kill her, and Bill Murray's on the phone, and they're saying, you know, is this Spencer? Yeah. Ha, ha, and right before that, she goes, you know, I'm, I'm going to go use the restroom. Uh, the, the, yeah, so you're going to use the restroom. She goes, oh, I'm going to wash up. He goes, okay. And he, he, they're all saying, have you killed her? Have, have, you, have you taken her to the restroom? He's like, no, no, she was able to take herself. He goes, wow, he made her commit suicide by herself. Wow, that's amazing. And he says, okay, well, did you, did you flush? And he's like, oh, no, I think she can flush all by herself. He goes, wow, you know, wow, he's, 
Look at that, he's disposing of the body. So, you know, things that she's doing are the cold words that he thinks, are, you know, it's what she's doing. So he, he's, answering, he's answering in the affirmative. And they're like, wow, you know, he's crazy. And so, you know, they, they decide that, uh, you know, he starts saying, well, yeah, after talking with her, you know, we want money. Oh, he wants money. How much you want? We want $3 million. He wants $3 million. Oh, well, you know, you have to call someone else to take care of him. So they call uh, another assassin. He's called Boris the Butcher. Great actor. Alfred Molina. You know, he's, you know, he's, he's the Russian butcher. He actually works in a butcher shop. But, you know, the things, the way he kills everybody. So he's after Bill Murray. And so now... Yeah, the, the, uh, this small group of, of, you know, British operatives who are after Bill Murray. Now you have this other Russian operatives that are after Bill Murray. And just the way things uh, happen, you know, he's brave because he thinks it's a theater troupe. You know, hand us your money. Hey, I'm not going to hand you my money. And he goes, okay, wait, wait, maybe not like that. Oh, I don't take my money. <laughs> People think he's crazy. Uh, and then there's a... Uh, the, you know, it's it, it's great because there, there's a scene where they actually have him and they're going to torture him. And uh, Alfred Molina caught him and uh, John Wally knocked her out. He's tied up. He goes, you know, we're going to torture you. And he's all, oh, you're going to torture me. Oh. And what ends up happening is Alfred Molina leaves the room. The two henchmen are playing this marble game. You know, it's a silly thing. Uh, but his his nose get, gets clogged and he and he needs needs nasal spray. So he tells the guy, "Give me give me some nasal spray." So he's trying to give him nasal spray and he sneezes and the guy goes, "Oh!" Which scares the other guy. He pulls out this this rod because they're playing this marble game. The marbles fall. The guy one of the guys slips on the marbles, uh, hits his head on a uh, on a table, and the other guy's all, "What's happening? What's happening?" And Bill Murray says, "Oh, I can help. I'm sorry." And hits him with the chair and knocks him out. <laughs> And one of the guys had a knife on his uh, on his arm, so Bill Murray breaks it, takes it out, cuts cuts his ropes off, and Joanna uh, Wally, you know, happens to wake up and sees that you know he's free, putting a gun in his belt, which he thinks it's fake, but it's real, and sees the guys all knocked out, the room's all trashed, and she's like, "Wow, he's great! <laughs> wow, he truly is a Superman!" You know? <laughs> and so you know the whole the whole point is now everyone thinks that he truly is an assassin and they are thinking that he's going to interfere with the with the assassination attempt and so you know everyone's following him, trying to shoot him you know and he's driving and wow oh, this is a great car chase you know, and they're really following him they're shooting at him because wow look at they're getting really close Alfred, Mar Alfred Molina you know he's trying to shoot him but he can't because you know Bill Murray does these crazy things he's all he's brilliant He's, he's fantastic. <laughs> you know, it's just it was great. Again, you know, I said, you, you could see it as a continuation of the What About Bob character. But, you know, because they're just as funny. But, you know, great films. You know, w w with Bill Murray, like, as I mentioned, you know, he's he's one of those those actors that, of course, can do comedy, can do drama. And that's where he got his uh, Academy Award nomination for, uh, you know, Lost in Translation for a drama. And then, you know, all those other movies. I could have picked anything. But again, you know, these were some of my favorites that I enjoy. And I know if you watch them, you'll enjoy them too. Well, that's what I got for you today. And this is Gus Summers, and you've been watching In Show Celebrities. This is the time I take every Monday to talk about some of my favorite films and actors. And remember, don't forget to visit us every Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. at theinshow.com where I host The In Show. And that's when I bring on you know, all sorts of uh, celebrities and guests to talk about uh, their projects or whatever it is that's on their mind. Of course, don't forget to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, uh, Flickr, Instagram, all those great social media sites. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, Gus has left the building.